forgive me lord for i have sinned i've been drinking from the cup of confirmation bias and i bring myself to the red table today to analyze that to try and die a tribe for that because i want to believe this scuderia ferrari stuff they're saying all the right things are they not like holy moly Frederick Vassar has come out. You guys would have seen the pictures of him doing the, the bloody huddle back at Marinello. Saying all the right things, doing all the right things. For contrast, saying and doing all that I'd expect from Mercedes and Toto Wolf, Rallying the troops. Motivational speaking. I'm seeing the huddle and it looks really, really good from afar. Particularly when you bear in mind the results of the Australian Grand Prix. There's only been a few one twos ever around that track at Albert Park. So surely this is befitting, symbolic even, of a team on the rise. A team that has momentum such that they can challenge the might of the balls that are red. Surely, surely, he says. And this is where I bring myself to the red table today because I'm starting to buy into the hype. And I know I shouldn't. This is why I'm a part-time casual, part-time purist. I, I, I know I shouldn't. It is only one race, surely. It is. Does Charles Leclerc have the minerals to put together a championship season? And by that, I'm talking, of course, race 1 to 24. We will see the occasional race from Charles Leclerc where it'll look like a world beater. You remember a couple of years back, the DRS chicken game that he was playing with one Max Verstappen. Then he looked like he could be a world beater, that he might have the minerals, the brain power, the race savvy, the strategic now to beat one Max Verstappen. But that only lasted for two races. Didn't it? <laughs> and then we just saw mean reversion instantly. Carlos Sainz, absolutely en hora buena, as they say in Spain, in good form. That was an absolutely incredible performance from the Feli at the Australian Grand Prix, given all the context, the fact that he's just realised he won't have a job in 25. He's not long off the operating theatre. Bravo, Carlos Sainz Jr. Maybe he's becoming that guy, that Michael Schumacher guy in his final year that's going to take Ferrari to the promised land. Maybe. But again, is this not copium, Cameron? Should you not know better? Because the behemoth, that is the balls that are red. Okay, look, let's make the case against Christian Hornergate, scandal, power struggle. We know now that the Uvidra family have had to get involved and provide some solace, give some stability to Red Bull and Christian Horner in his role as team prince. So we know that, we know that, we know that on one side of the fence, you have Joss and Max and Helmut and the guys in Aust Austria. Red Bull GmbH, Oliver Mintzlaff, Mark Mataschitz, Dietrich's son. We know on one side of the fence, those buds it. And on the other side of the fence, you have the 51% owner, the Thai Uvidri family. You have Christian Horner. These two do not get along. Now, many were, many were speculating that the allegations of misconduct were going to be the straw that broke the camel's back as far as Christian Horner's tenure as Red Bull team principal. But apparently, at the latest count, all is well in the Red Bull camp. They had the sit down in Dubai, being 51% owner, the Uvidia family. All of the factions, Austria. And they've had a kumbaya. They realise now that it is, of course, in their best interest to play nicely. And here's the reason why. Because Max Verstappen said, you know, if you're going to get rid of Helmut Marku, then you may as well get rid of me. Ergo, let me put a clause in my contract that facilitates my ability to make this contract null and void. Should my guy, 85-year-old Helmut Marku, leave the entity so they need to keep Helmut Marko. He's now more of a key personnel, a key man than ever. Because if you don't have Helmut Marko in situ, then you might not have Max Verstappen. And that is a killer. Matthew, a legend. I'm not going to lie after the last race. Japan has me slightly nervous. I'm optimistic. The big upgrade that we've all waited for is coming. Revenge Tour is looking imminent. Matthew, so I don't know whether you're talking about, I, I assume that you're talking from a Ferrari perspective even, or maybe a Mercedes. Mercedes have nothing coming, Matthew. <laughs> that car's not going to fix anything. Ferrari, however, who knows? Red Bull, also, and maybe this is mean reversion, and this is this is the story arc that I'm trying to I'm trying to wrestle with. My confirm my confirmation bias 
the part-time casual inside of me desperately wants for Ferrari to be the ones to be able to take it to Red Bull this year. You look at the championship, okay, of course, it's only after three races, but it's close. I can't remember a time when it's been this close for the longest time, hence why I'm drinking from the cup of competitive copium, praying to the F1 gods that Ferrari, in the hands of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz Jr., are capable of challenging the beast in 2024. That is Max Verstappen's Red Bull. And it is only Max Verstappen's Red Bull, isn't it? There is something specific about that car's handling dynamic that in the hands of Max Verstappen, it's an absolute beast. In the hands of Checo Perez, not so much. Potentially, it's the fact that he likes an understeery car and the quickest car that you can build in the regs in 2024 is not an understeery one. It's on the nose. That's what they've built for Max Verstappen. And that's why when he gets in the car, it's a different gravy, right? The symbiosis of Max in that RB20 is just God tier levels. Probably, probably the most optimized driver car pairing that we've seen in F1 history. Is that controversial? Maybe, maybe, but that's my story and I'm sticking with it. Hence why Ferrari have in front of themselves, Matthew, a gargantuan mountain to climb, don't they? It's humongous. Although the sounds coming out from Mar Maranello giving me pause for thought, I hope so badly, so desperately that they can nail them around Suzuka. And this is why Suzuka in a couple of days time is so bloody important because Suzuka is a Red Bull track. If you, if the racing gods were going to design a track around which that RB20 was going to be God tier, then it would look like Suzuka. Super, all those twisty turns. Again, sometimes you've got to stamp on, it's, it's all things of a track. Adrian Newey has designed a car that is all things to all tracks, right? Again, of course, it's particularly quick over the course of the, the medium to high speed turns. Of course it is. But it also has that, it's malleable as a chassis. You can stamp on the brake pedal. They're going to go well around that track, our Red Bull. So no longer. So look, if, Aust if Austria, what's he on about? If Australia, if you can call it an anomaly... Suzuka will not be that, will it? It absolutely, Matthew, you're far too kind, sir. Here he is, will I am, you guys are legends. My thought, I meant about the RB20 reliability. I was nervous, not Ferrari, and definitely not nervous about Mercedes, my fault. Captain. No, don't be daft, Matthew, we're, we're, we're riffing here. Will says, congrats on the 20K arena of oh, podcasting pugilism. You guys are legends. Will, don't get me start, start tearing up in here, man. I'm already struggling to talk. So emotional am I about reaching 20k. This is the first stream post the 20k, isn't it? Oh gosh, what is he on about? But you know what? Well, we move. There is a that I had a had a cheeky sip of something quite spicy yesterday to congratulate oneself. But as of um the 30th of the third two zero two four, we move on to the next one. But I digress. Suzuka is a track that's going to favour the RB20, and so if Australia was anomalous. Suzuka damn sure will not be. RB20 will be ridiculously good around that track. And I don't expect them to experience any reliability issues. Lest we forget the sort of string that they've put together. That was going to be like, in the last 20 races, Max Verstappen has only lost two, right? Both of which were to Carlos Sainz Jr. Monza and Australia. So if you if you take if you do the blue sky thinking, if we take a step back and look at the trend, then you cut you're gonna expect Red Bull to come back with anger this time round, aren't we? That they're gonna come back with true vengeance. They're gonna be really good. And then Max Verstappen as well. You know that he doesn't like to lose already. I've been theorizing for the longest time that Max Verstappen, when he talked about Checo Perez, remember that time in Brazil when they wanted Checo to get sixth because he was still in the fight for second place in the championship, the vice champion title. Remember they asked Max Verstappen to move over and Max said something to the effect of, don't ask me that again. I told you in summer, don't ask me that again. The rumor is that Max Verstappen said he's never ever gonna lose. If he finishes on track, you will never ever lose to his teammate Checo Perez. The disrespect. He doesn't think Checo is on his level. That's just the truth. And he has that level of spite in him. And the only reason why I say that is to say this. 
imagine the level of spite, the level of vengeance that we will be in one Max Verstappen on the back of his streak coming to an end. On the back of the talk being around Ferrari's resurgence, Carlos Sainz et al. That's the chat now as at 30th of the third 2-4. And Max Verstappen is going to rock up to Suzuka and he's not going to be in the mood. And that for the rest of them, for the other 19 drivers on the grid is a problem. It's foreboding, especially when you think of the most recent activity of one Max Verstappen around this track, Suzuka. You remember his lap, his qualifying lap last year, and that's something that I'm looking forward to. Listen, if we're talking, if we're talking now, Steve, what's going on? When us? Um, well, yeah, listen, if we're talking about most recent activities, Max Verstappen and Helmut Marko has spoken to this as much, hasn't he? Max Verstappen around Suzuka is like, is like Thanos before the... With all those stones, <laughs> you can't you can't fudge with that fella around Suzuka. Look, the qualifying lap last year was one of the most god tier laps that I've ever seen. Truly weapons grade. It's rare that you see these drivers get into this this stratosphere, right, where they're just they're in flow state. Think Monaco, Senna, ATF, like that type of one, where it's it's otherworldly. Now, Max Verstappen doesn't speak to it in those terms. But when you watch the onboard of it, I still, and again, this is a lap that I, I revisit periodically just to just to familiarise myself with what greatness looks like. The onboard of Max Verstappen Suzuki. Yeah? I can't see where he's left any time on the table. Like he's straight lining all the turns. He's taking on, on, on his exit from the apex. He just leaves no, he leaves no crumbs, does he? As the kids say. At every single exit, he's taking every single tenth out of. And that's why some aficionados refer to it as the perfect lap. So Max Verstappen, I say all that to say this, Max Verstappen around Suzuka is a different gravy. That geezer will be coming around this track and he's not going to be playing with the rest of them. He's got a point to prove. Yeah, all these Christian Horner allegations. You think, well, you think I'm leaving. This is my team. Max Verstappen will be saying, I built this house. Not Horner or anyone else. Are you talking about nobody's bigger than the team? I'm bigger than the team, Max Verstappen will be thinking. And let me show you why. You remember that lap that I put down last year? Well, here's here's that lap plus a bit. Add some sauce and some spice. Max Verstappen in qualifying. If there's going to be a highlight of that weekend for me, Q3, Max Verstappen. I'll be up bright and early. And it's going to be early again for, for, for British kinfolk. It will be early again, but I'll be up. I'll be streaming that because I want to see. I want to see Max Verstappen in Q3 because I've. I have a feeling if my spidey senses are telling me anything, I think that he's going to put together a lap, a big fu lap. What are you talking about, Ferrari? And I don't think the, the joke is around that track. Go on, then let's normalise for this because many critics will say, you know what. That RB20 is a rocket ship. And they will be right when saying that. But in equal machinery around Suzuka, I don't think any one of those other 19 are beating Max Verstappen is the truth. So I think, here's what I'm trying to say. I think if if it's in Ferrari's interest to build up some momentum, what they didn't need to happen this week is for that race to be at Suzuka. Because Max Verstappen does not play Jomo. What's going on? Yeah, Max Verstappen does not play around Suzuka the Japanese Grand Prix you're having a laugh are you having a laugh he has that relationship with Honda they greet him as if he's one of their own this is a home Grand Prix for Max Verstappen and Helmut Marko has said he's spoken to this right he said as much that Suzuka's a real driver's track so let's see how Max Verstappen goes they've set it up they have a B in their bonnet and they don't like that Ferrari have taken some of their spotlight Matthew you're far too kind I could be alone but I kind of want Suzuka to be the last race of the season again with history uh, you know what Matthew I like what you've done there I think once upon a time if we're talking about 1994 and Damon Hill's year with Michael Schumacher it was the penultimate one then wasn't it yeah and similarly in 80. 89 so yeah when when it was um prost and senna suzuki used to be the second last race i think um but yeah listen max is gonna max is gonna be baying for blood here and i just think he's gonna i, I listen as much as i want to see competition i hope that ferrari can go well i think first order priority for me is to see the pinnacle 
of man and machine. Here, here comes the, the die hard in me. Put to the side for a second the part-time casual. This is why I'll be watching Max Verstappen in qualifying because I think he's capable of the upper echelons of automotive pugilism, will I? <laughs> I, think, I think that's what we're going to see in qualifying. Max Verstappen in an RB20 at Suzuka. Are you having a laugh? Listen, worth the entry fee each and every single time with spite and vengefulness in his eyes. What do you mean, Carlos Sainz Jr.? What, a, mate? He's gonna be looking to. He, he's gonna be I'm telling you he will be coming for the rest of them, and and I think they should be fearful genuinely. I mean, just think about you guys. Remember the overtake? I want to say Suzuka. What's last year? Twenty three. Suzuka twenty two. You remember it was raining, and Charles Leclerc put it on pole, didn't he? He did put it on pole. And again, we were talking similar things. Charles Leclerc is coming and Ferrari are coming and maybe they can challenge Red Bull, yada, yada, yada. Charles Leclerc drops it on pole to the delight of F1 fans around the world. And it's raining. So again, maybe Charles Leclerc can go well. Maybe, maybe Max Verstappen stamps in that hopium. Clean, turn one, round the outside, full tank of fuel, Goes round Charles Leclerc like that chap's going backwards. I'll never forget it. As Charles Leclerc, he's no slouch. Max Verstappen nails him, turn one around the outside like it's Barcelona 2016 again. And I think we might get something similar this weekend because he's vengeful. I do, listen, say all that to say this. I desperately hope that Max Verstappen gets challenged at the very least. I'm praying to the racing gods that they give Scuderia Ferrari and Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, the conditions under which they can excel, that the tyre deck has gone away, that it's a thing of the past, and that Ferrari, above all things, have the machine, have the operational infrastructure, and the strategic now, now more than ever, requisite to challenge the balls that are red. I hope so. I hope so. I'm getting carried away here and thinking that maybe they do, but my racing brain tells me that it's nothing of the sort. Chill out, Cameron. Suzuka, it's Suzuka, it's Red Bull, it's Max Verstappen. Will says, bring back Brazil as the final race in 2025. Australia is back as a... F yeah, I heard about the calendar change. Well, you know what? I'm not really for... I, I, I will end on this. All that I would say about the calendar, they need to optimise. If they're talking about this um, net zero stuff, they need to optimise for sustainability. I'm tired of seeing a calendar where they're just like, do you know what I mean? Like surely Miami and Canada need to be in consecutive race weekends. Surely so close are they to each other. Now I know they've got calendar issues and, and Canada don't want to move and whatever. But how are we like, do you know what I mean? Just be sensible. But again, I'm not going to diatribe an F1. You guys have been legends. Listen, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Between now and next time, as always, remember to look but never stare.